Hi everyone, Sandra Sherman here. Greetings from sunny Austria. Today we'll immerse ourselves in gypsy jazz. I'll be teaching you the chords and the uh, gypsy strumming called La Pomp for all of me. I'll show everything slow and easy and there's also a slow tempo version at the end of the song. I'll explain everything very detailed. I'll have tabs for you to download from the link down below in the description box. There is a second video, a lead guitar video of this uh, version of All of Me and you can play everything you've learned in this video, the chords, uh, over the other video because those uh, each video complements the other video. They have the same song form, the same arrangement, the same tempo. So you can play what you've learned today of the, over the lead guitar video. Okay, let's explore the world of gypsy jazz uh, comping. All of me is in the key of C and my arrangement includes an intro, the head, which is the main melody, uh, one chorus of comping the soloist and then we're back to the head again. Each of these choruses has, a, a one, has an A1 section and an A2 section. Let's take any regular chord, uh, uh, like an E7, that's easy to play. 7th of the E string, the 6th of the D and the 7th of the, e string, uh, of the G string. And only those three are played, those three strings, this means you have to mute all the other strings. The A string is muted with your middle finger by just touching it. And the high B and E string, I, I mute them with my index. Alright, so these are muted and the A string is muted. Okay, the La Pomp groove is basically just a 4-4, four, four, but it's about uh, a special uh, detail, which I'm going to show you. So the 4-4 four, four is just bass and then the higher the upper notes, okay? So bass, high, bass, high, and we have a little more stress on the uh, counts number two and four. They are accented. One, two, 
On, in your left hand, release the pressure quickly after each time you strum the strings. And off the fingers go. I mean, I don't, don't release them all the way, but uh, just so that the strings are kept from ringing. See? If you don't do that, it sounds like... We don't want that. And now here's the detail that makes all the difference. The first and the third beat are played, are actually two strums. Uh, the main strum is uh, preceded, is that the correct word, by a little, uh, 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 an upstroke that is either muted or not muted, but played very, very shortly. Let's mute it. That's simpler for beginners, easier to play. So you have an upstroke and a downstroke, but those, these two fall each other so 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 quickly it's like one stroke uh, one, one uh, strum and then we have that high thing the upper strings and no matter how fast or slow the tempo is you always have that super short up, uh, up upstroke all right that was it for the la pomp let's start the song here is the intro to all of me i'll play through it quickly first so you can hear what it sounds like then i'll break it all down for you slow and easy one two three four We have a turnaround that leads us to the uh, C, which is the one chord of that song. So we start on the third grade of that scale. That's an E minor 7 chord. And in Gypsy, we play most of the chords that have the root on the A string. Like this E would be on the seventh of the A string. We played with, with a fifth in bass. So we don't play the root, but we play the fifth. And this is always... Uh, just above the root on the low E string. So we have the seventh of the E string, the A string is muted, the fifth of the D, the seventh of the G, and the eighth of the B string. And nothing on the high E, of course. So watch out that you uh, take care that you mute everything. All right, we have half a bar, so we play one, Two, just two beats. Then we have the uh, fifth, which is the A7, and this is very. This motion is very common in gypsy jazz. All you have to do is you leave your index as it is, and you move all the other fingers one to the left. And this is an A7 flat nine. What you get is the sixth of the E, the fifth of the D, the sixth of the. Uh, G string and the seventh of the B string, A13 flat nine. The flat nine is in bass. All right, another two beats. So we have. Then we do the same, the exact same thing, two frets down. So from here to here, and then the exact exact same thing from here and here. D minor seven, five of E, third of D. 5th of G and 6th of B. And everything one to the left except for the index. Then we have 4 of E, 3 of D, 4 and 5. It's all two beats. Right? And then we have a little break. I go to the C6-9 with the 5th in bass. So we have the 3rd on the E string, nothing on the A of course. Then we have the 2nd on the D and G, you need to bar this. And the 3rd on the B string. C6 with a 5th in bass 
It looks like a G6, it actually is, but you can also name it C6 with the fifth in bass. All right, and we now have, so we have a scratch from above, one, from, uh, one to the down, one downstroke scratch. Scratching, you just uh, touch your strings and don't press them. So everything's dead, it's muted. And then you hit the strings. And one and, one and. So we start delayed on the one and, and one and. Then we go to the A minor seven, regular jazz chord, fifth of the E, fifth of the D, G and B string by barring. Then I have two scratches, so I release the pressure and have a down and an upstroke uh, scratch. Then I go back to a 2-5, D minor 7, we had it before, that's 5 of E, 3rd of D, 5th of G and 6th of the B string. Right. And now we have Two scratches, one uh, upstroke and one downstroke. And the last chord is a G13. That's the regular jazz chord, the th uh, third of the E, third of the D, fourth of the G, and fifth of the B string. You, you uh, have a downstroke here. Um, You might wonder why it's a downstroke and not an upstroke, because if I have alternate strumming, now would be the upstroke. But all the stressed notes, everything that's ex uh, that has an accent, needs uh, a downstroke, usually, because uh, in jazz or in gypsy swing, you get a more, uh, more of a laid back feeling, okay? So we always do that, also in jazz strumming. That last, Strum is a little later, it's a little delayed, okay? It's, it just sounds different than uh, right? But you can do that. But downstroke is better. Okay, so here's the entire intro at slow tempo. One, two, three, four. And now we are in the head section, comping the melody player, and this is section A1. I'm gonna play it fast and then show you everything in detail. Here we go. One, two, three, four. We start with a C6, which is a really common gypsy chord. They use a lot of six chords instead of uh, major seven chords. We have the root here on the eighth fret of the E, the seventh of the D, and the ninth of the G string. We have two bars. One, two, three, four, three, Then it's over to E7 with that fifth in bass. That's the seventh of the E string, the sixth of the D, and the seventh of the G string. Two more bars. And ring finger glides over to A7, fifth of the E, fifth of the D, and sixth of the G. Also two bars. And uh, D minor. That's a regular uh, cowboy kind of chord. 5A, 7, 7, DG, and the 6th of the B string. I mute the E string. Yes, I do, yeah. Two more chords, uh, two more bars. From here we go back to the E7. We had that before, 7 of E, 6 of D, and 7 of G. Two bars. 
and two bars of A minor seven. That's a classic uh, uh, jazz chord. S uh, fifth of the E string, fifth of the D, G, and B strings by barring with your ring finger. Make sure the A string is muted. Two more bars. And D9 is next for two bars, and all I do is I glide my fingers down and into that hole, that, that gap, I put my middle, uh, my index finger. So I have five of A, four of D, five, five of D and G. I don't press that E string really. When we comp, we, we play up to the B string usually. We don't play the E string. Uh, we don't like high string playing when we are comping because we that would collide with the uh, melody player, all right, with the melody. So we wanna don't want to go as high. Two more bars. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. So E seven, A minor seven, D nine. That was. And now one bar of D minor seven. Only one bar because the last bar is gonna be a break. That's the five of E, that's the fifth in the bass again. So here's the root and here is the first thing we play. Five of E, three of D, five of the G string and the sixth of the B string. D minus seven, like in the intro. One bar only, one, two, three, four. Then I have the scratch on the end. It's an up uh, stroke. One, two, three, four, and. All right, and then we move over to the G13 with B flat in bass. That's the fourth of E, third that remains of D, the fourth of G, and the fifth of uh, B. So all you do is these fingers go over one to the left while the index remains. And we have the break here now. We already had an upstroke uh, muted, so a uh, scratch. And now it's another one on the down. That's the count number one. So there's nothing in count number one except for that scratch. And then uh, we strum. That's one end. And one end. Another upstroke with a, a scratch. And now we change to G13. That's the third of the E, the third of the D, the fourth of the G, and the fifth of the B. And we have two downstrokes here, and they're really short. So release the pressure in your left hand to keep the strings from ringing. One, two. All right, that G break, okay? Once again, three, four. And one, and one more time with the D E minor seven in front. And here's the A two section for the head. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. We start with the same chord as in section A1, and that's the C6 chord. That's 8 of E, 7th of D, and the 9th of uh, G string, and we have it for two bars. Then it's the E7 again, that's the 7th of the E, 6th of the D, and the 7th uh, of the G string, two more, two more bars. And now we have that A7, but we don't play it for two full bars, but we have an ascending movement that leads us to D minor. So whenever we have an interval of a fourth from one chord to the next, that's uh, five frets. One, two, three, four, five. Don't count the first one. Uh, that's an interval of a fourth, and then we can have an ascending movement. We do that in jazz, and in gypsy jazz it's really played very often. 
So we have that A7. This is the fifth of the E, the fifth of the D, and the sixth of the G string. We played for half a bar only. That's two beats. Then we go to the second grade of the scale. That's the B minor seven, seventh of A, uh, E, sorry, seven of D and G strings. I don't play the B string because I have a melody here. The A7 didn't use uh, the, the B string. This is gonna be my melody in the chords. So I don't wanna destroy it that by playing up to the B string. So seven, seven, seven up to the B string, uh, e, G string, sorry. Two more beats, three, four. Then we have a passing chord, that's a C diminished that uh, takes us to the last chord. Eight of E, seven of D, eight of uh, G. Two more beats. Then just put your middle and ring finger out and leave your index where it is. We get an A chord with the C sharp in bass. That's the ninth fret of the E, the seventh of the D, and the ninth of the G for two beats. So everything is two beats. Right, one more time. And that takes us to the D minor six. We like six chords in gypsy jazz. So instead of D minor seven, we take D minor six. That's 10th of the E, 9th of the D, and a 10th of the G string. Two full bars. And now our chords are different from the A1 section. Now we have an F major seven, and that's a regular jazz chord. F is here on the eighth of the A string. 10th of D, 9th of G, and the 10th of the B string. I do not press against that E string. Okay, so that's one full bar. One, two, three, four. Then I change over to F minor seven by rearranging my fingers, but I stay here on the F. That's eight, 10, eight by barring, and ninth of B. One more bar. Move everything over to one to the left and get an E minus seven, seven, nine, seven, eight. For a whole bar. And the last chord here is the E13. That's five of E, five of D, six of G, and seven of B. That's a full uh, bar. Okay, those last four bars from F major. Three, four. And now it's for my turnaround. I have a D minor seven now. We had that before. Fifth of E, third of D, fifth of G, and sixth of B. One bar. Then G13 with B9 in bass, move everything one to the left, but the index remains. Gives us a fourth of E, third of D, fourth of G, and fifth of B. G13, but flat nine, and I'll play that for a bar. And now I have my C6 with the fifth in bass, and I stop it. I tell you why in a second, but first let me show you that chord. A third of the E string, second of D and G by barring, and a third of the B string. And all I do is a short one, which means you need to release the pressure of your left hand immediately after the strum. All right, and this is the pick. Um, this is the pickup, the stop for the pickup for the lead guitarist. He starts his solo here. All right. So from the uh, G13, let's revisit from D minor seven. Then you count to four. So this was one. One, two, three, four. And then you make a little fill. We have a D minor seven again. Five, three, five, six. One down, a scratch up and a scratch down. And then you go to the G13. That's the third of the E, third of the D, fourth of G, and fifth of uh, B. And 
you play down again so we have a little more relaxed feeling. Now we are comping the soloist and we can play a lot more now because we want to push the soloist a little bit and give him some good chords and standing movements. I play uh, the A1 part now for you uh, in fast tempo, at fast tempo, and then I show you everything in detail again. One, two, one, two, three, four. kind of busy. We start with the C6-9 now at the third of the A string, barring two of the D and G strings and the uh, third of the B string. So this time we don't have the uh, G in bass. All right. Uh, we have two bars of this. Now it's for the E7. And I have an A sending movement to uh, the A7. So as I explained before, you can do that ascending movement whenever you have an interval of a fourth. And E to A is an interval of a fourth. It's five strings, uh, five frets. One, two, three, four, five. All right, we start with the E7. That's the uh, open E string, the second of the D, the open D string, and the second of uh, the first of the G string. Please, with your index finger, mute the B and E strings. We, uh, sorry. We play two beats, so half a bar this is. Then we go over to an F sharp minor seven. That's the second uh, grade of the scale. Two of the E, two of the D and the G. I don't play the B string. Um, it's the same ascending movement, by the way, that we had before, right? Just down here. Now it's the passing chord that G diminished. Third of E, second of D, and a third of G. And you put your fingers out again, except for the index, and you get an E with a G, uh, with a G sharp in bass. Fourth of E, second of D, and fourth of G. So that's the ascending movement here. Three, four. And we are at A7, our target chord. Fifth of E, fifth of D, and the sixth of the G string for two bars. And to D minor, resolution, five of A, seven, seven of D and G. And the sixth of B, don't press the E string. Play two bars. And 
where are we? Yeah, E7, the seventh of the E string, sixth of the D, the seventh of the G string. Two bars. And now we go to A minor seven, and we want to move up to D7. And what we got here, another interval of a fourth, we can move, uh, we can have an ascending movement again. But this time it's the first time that we move from a minor chord. We always used to move from a uh, dominant chord. A7 we moved, or E7. And now the changes are a little different because we have a different scale. So we need different chords. A minor 7 is the fifth of the E, fifth of D and G. Don't press that B string. Our melody is here. All right. We play two beats only, half a bar. Then I go to an E7 with the 5th in bass. That's the 7th of E, 6th of D, and the 7th of G. Play it twice. And now I have a minor chord. Uh, it's an inversion actually. It's C6, but it's also an A minor. That's the 8th uh, of the E string, the 7th of the D, and the 9th uh, of the G string. Last one is our A with the C sharp again. That's common to the other progression. So ninth of E, seventh of D, and the ninth of G string. So here's that uh, entire upward motion or uh, what you call it, ascending movement. Three, four. Uh, sorry, we start on A minor. Three, four. That brings us to our D7 chord. That's the 10th of the E, the 10th of the D, and the 11th of the G string for two bars. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now we have a break. I go to D minor, we have D minor to G7. I start on the D minor chord, that's the 10th of the E, 10 and 10 of D and G. I don't fret the uh, B string. And I have my upstroke scratch, downstroke scratch, that's the one. And one and, we had that kind of break before that rhythm. And one and, then I have, um, and is the upstroke, then three, four. Those last twos are short, so I need to release my pressure. And one and, and three, four. Quicker, three, four. Three, four. And now I shape a G7 with the fifth in bass. That's 10 of the E, 9 of the uh, D, and 10 of the G. And I have... That's one on the G7, then a little scratch, upstroke, then I go one to the left, that's a G flat seven now. I have a downstroke, and I go back up to the G7 with a downstroke, okay? And then I fill it up with another upstroke and another down stroke and that last one is short. Those last two bars, that's the break, all right? D minor to G7. Three, four. One more time. Three, four. And here's the A2 section for our solo comping. One, two, three, four. And here it is slowly. All right. 
We had all of this before except for the last bar. We start with the C6, 8, 5, uh, sorry, 8, 7 of D and the 9th of G, two bars. E7, that's 7, 6 and 7. Now it's two bars, A7, 5, 5, 6 for two bars. Mine, D minor, we had that also. Five of A, seven, seven, six of B, don't play the high E string. Two bars. And here's that change in the second uh, house, that's the F major seven. Eight of A, 10 of D, ninth of G, and the 10th of B, don't play the high E string. One bar only. F minor seven. 10, uh, sorry, 8 of 8, 10, 8 by barring, and 9. Don't play the high E string. That was one bar. Move to the left for one bar. So e minor 7, going over to A13. 5 of E, 5 of D, 6 and 7. Okay, that was uh, 4. D minor 7, 5 of E, 3rd of D, 5 of G, and 6 of B, one bar. Move everything into here, and we have a G13 flat 9, 4, 3, 4, 5, one bar. And now we have to stop at the C6 9, we had it before also, that's a third of the E, second of D and G, and a third of the B. Release the string pressure immediately, and then count to four. One, two, three, four. And now we have a different break in the last bar. We play G7, that's the third of the E, the third of the D, and the fourth of the G. Don't play the B string, mute it. Um, one, then go one to the left, and back. Sorry, there's a scratch in between. One, and this is an up scratch. One, and two is the G flat seven, two, two, three. And then the uh, two and is the G seven back again. And I stop at count four. One, and two, and three, four. Make sure that last one is a downstroke. Down, up, down, down, stop. And now it's for the ending, and we repeat the last two bars. So we have, in the tabs it says da coda, which is Italian for to the head, I think, or target. Yeah, and it that's exactly where it leads to. There is a target sign, like on, I don't know what you call it in English, but like on the shooting range, you know, the target 
thing. And um, that's where you're jumping right now. And all you have to do is uh, put your fingers back again to the D minor 7, 5, 3, 5, 6. And we have a slightly different rhythm now. What we do is we have that scratch up, scratch down. Then we play, uh, we have the strings ringing at beat one end, and one end, then up, and two downs. All right, three, four. Then we move our fingers back towards the G13 flat nine, four, three, four, five, and play a regular bar. So that was one repetition. Now we repeat it again. We move it up here to the D minor seven again with the same rhythm. And back to G13, regular rhythm. So two repetitions. So all together we have three, but the first one is a uh, regular rhythm. Before the coda we had coda, and then we have a stop for that last lead guitar line. Do, 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 do. All right, that's a C6 nine. Three of A, two of D and G, and three of the B string. One, strum, and then release the pressure of left hand immediately. Count to four. Two, three, four. And we play another time to C6, nine. One, stop. Two and we change to C6, that's the final chord. That's a three on the A, the second of D and G, and a first of the B string. So one, two, and one more time. One, two, and it helps to have a rest in between on count number two. One, two, and so from the stop, three, four. Two, three, four.
I really hope you liked my tutorial on all of me and gypsy comping in the La Pomme style. If you do so, please like the video, which means give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to never miss out on a new video release. And I see you next week. Tschüss, Baba, Servus from Vienna. Ciao, ciao.